It is impossible for us in our human strength to escape Satan's evil attacks. His aim is to ruin the soul of every human being. Knowing that his time is short, he uses every destructive power and evil strategy to lure us into his trap. But there is a safeguard against his deceptive tactics. Welcome back to what promises to be an epic journey through the unseen. We're looking at a saga not of this world. It is the battle for our souls. This is the third part of a 13-part series unlike any other. We're diving into the cosmic war that rages beyond what we can see, hear, or imagine. It is a war between the forces of good and evil. We're digging deep into the heart of this cosmic battle. This series isn't just about understanding the forces at play. It is also about knowing our place within this universal struggle. Every episode, every moment of this journey matters because like it or not, this war touches us all. But before diving into this conflict, let's take a moment to invite God's presence. Dear Lord, give us a better understanding of this war between good and evil. Keep our feet planted on the safe path and shield us from Satan's attacks. In Jesus' name, amen. Satan is diligently working to destroy every one of us. He has come down with great anger, knowing that his time is short. Our only safety is Jesus. We must walk in his wisdom. We must live by his teachings. In our human power, we cannot detect the workings of Satan. We do not have the ability in our own power to recognize his subtle traps. But Jesus knows his deceptive arts, and he can keep our feet on the safe path. In John 14, 6, Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Similarly, in John 12, 35, in his call for us to look to him, Jesus instructs us with these words, A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. This is an urgent reminder to walk in the light. Jesus' instruction is more than a guiding principle. It's a lifeline in a world shattered by deception and evil. When entrapped by Satan, the devil, we are bound by the power of darkness. It is God who delivers us from the power of darkness and conveys us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Revelation 12, 9 vividly portrays the devil as a dragon and a serpent. Why is he depicted as a dragon and a serpent? It symbolizes his tactics of destruction and deceit. Satan's intent as a dragon is to annihilate us. And like a serpent or a snake, that slitters through the grass undetected, he slitters into our lives, weaving lies and deceit, seeking every opportunity to destroy us. Though the Romans crucified Jesus on the cross, Satan is the one who orchestrated this evil attack. His dark legacy of orchestrating evil continues to live on. In the years after Jesus' death, using the Romans as his instruments, he carried out brutal acts against thousands of Christians. Imperial Rome had professed followers of Jesus tortured, thrown to the lines, and burned at stake for refusing to worship its false gods. Despite facing cruel punishment, the Christians remained faithful. They did not give in to Satan's brutal attacks. In fact, their resilience only fueled the spread of the gospel, and the Christian church continued to grow even amid persecution. However, seeing that his tactics were not working, Satan devised new schemes. When brute force failed to extinguish the light of Christianity, he changed his strategy and infiltrated the church itself. Like the snake that he is, he used the guise of new converts to implant false teachings. False teaching slithered in, sowing seeds of confusion and heresy among the people of God. 
pagan worshipers of many gods were baptized without thorough instruction in the Bible truths. Leaders seeking to compromise the scriptures with the popular customs and cultures of the day flooded the church with error. In the fourth and fifth centuries, it appeared that error would prevail and Satan appeared to be winning. These centuries were eras of compromise in which the church cardinals and leaders blended pagan practices with Christian teachings. Nevertheless, in trying times like these, God did not abandon his people. They found Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, his presence was a beacon of hope. His true followers were guided by the Holy Spirit to uphold the scriptures and remain steadfast in their faith, even when faced with overwhelming pressure to give up their honest convictions, they stood firm. His divine intervention was crucial in preserving the core truths of the faith against corruption and ensuring that the genuine message of Jesus continued to thrive. They remained loyal to God's revealed will as expressed in his written word. They refused to compromise the truth of his word, regardless of the pressures placed on them, either overtly or covertly. As followers of Christ, we are called not just to walk in his light, but to be light bearers, shining forth in a world that is covered in darkness. May we draw strength from knowing that light drives out darkness. We become light bearers when we accept Jesus and adhere to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we move forward with courage, holding fast to the truths and spreading Jesus' love and hope to the entire world. In some circumstances, compromise is considered acceptable. At what point should we draw the line? View the next segment of this video, part two, Compromise, Satan's Subtle Strategy. Compromise is the process in which two sides reach a mutually acceptable agreement that is seen as practical and conducive to peace and harmony. Its core involves a delicate balance of give and take designed to enable both parties to coexist peaceably either as neighbors, family members, or even nations. But can there be compromise when it comes to spiritual matters? When we delve into spiritual affairs, particularly the contrast between Christ and Satan, the notion of compromise takes on an entirely different dimension. There can be no compromise between truth and error, light and darkness, good and evil, Christ and Satan. Jesus is truth. He proclaims in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Everything he represents and teaches springs from divine truth. He is the cornerstone of all biblical doctrine and moral integrity. In contrast, Satan is declared the father of lies as in John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Jesus is the author of truth. Because he is the author of truth, what he says is truth. Truth comes from the heart of an all-wise, all-loving, all-knowing God. He is the foundation of all reality and all truth. On the other hand, Satan is a liar and the father of lies. He will use lies, deceit, misinformation, and distortion of truth to lead us astray. From the very beginning, as seen in the Garden of Eden, Satan used deception to weave his dark narratives, deceiving Eve with the distorted truth and outright denying what God said, stating in Genesis 3, 4, that you shall not surely die. He twisted God's words in the context of eating the fruit. His statement was a clear contradiction of what God had said. Satan's strategy has not changed. His aim is to undermine our confidence in God's word. 
He wants us to believe that the Bible is out of date and no longer relevant. He tries to use God's divine word as an instrument against him. He contradicts God's revealed will, distorts the scriptures, and at times misquotes them to his advantage. Therefore, when it comes to Christ and Satan, good and evil, truth and error, light and darkness, there can be no compromise. Thus, this battle between Christ and Satan is not merely an ancient biblical account. It is a living, ongoing conflict. Satan's strategy involves concealing lies as biblical truths, leaving the naive and inexperienced away from the real teachings of the scriptures. Proverbs 23, 23, John 17, 17, and John 8, 32 highlights our safeguard against Satan's lies. Our safeguard is the truth. Proverbs 23, 23 tells us to buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. In John 17, 17, Jesus prays, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And in John 8, 32, Jesus tells us, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The Bible and the Bible only is our ultimate source of truth and wisdom. It guides us to recognize and resist deception. Knowing what is written in the Bible is our protective shield against falsehood. Having the ability to distinguish the truth from falsehood equips us to oppose Satan's deceptions. If what is presented contradicts what is written in the Bible, we must reject it regardless of who provides it. Historically, Satan's tactics have involved making the scriptures inaccessible and distorting its understanding. This manipulation of scriptural understanding and the centralization of ecclesiastical power illustrates how far-reaching the consequences of spiritual deception can be. Today, Satan's attempts to twist biblical truths persist in subtle forms through cultural reinterpretations and misleading doctrines that stray from the core message of the scripture. This ongoing distortion campaign seeks to undermine the Bible's authority, replacing divine directives with human interpretations. Let us then be diligent in our study and application of the Bible. May it arm us with the knowledge we need to shield us against Satan's deceptions. It is critical to know that Satan is concentrating all his energies to bend your will to his, to make you his agent in opposing the plans of Christ, that you may refuse to have Jesus reign over you. Satan will seek to draw you away from Christ, that you may become his agent and in drawing others away and thus frustrate the plan of God. The more intelligent you are, the more attractive, the harder he will work that he may persuade you to lay your talents at his feet and aid him to accomplish his end in alluring others under his black banner. What happens to those who fail to take the time to read and study the scriptures for themselves? View the next segment of this video, part three, Savage Wolves. In the ancient city of Melitus, a critical meeting unfolds as the Apostle Paul en route to Jerusalem gathers the church leaders from Ephesus. Here, Paul delivers a grave prophetic warning about the future dangers that they will face. To discover the specifics he outlined, we turn to Acts 20, 27 through 32. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, salvage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will arise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now brethren, 
I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Paul's counsel sounds grim, but he wanted to prepare the church for what was coming. Paul warns them about two things that will happen after he leaves. His first major warning is in Acts 20, 29, where he says that wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Paul was letting the believers know that they would receive fierce persecution. His use of the word wolves shows how brutal the persecution would be. True to Paul's prediction, in the first century, years AD 1 to 100, and the second century, years AD 101 to 200, the Romans brutally attacked Christians who refused to renounce their faith. These Christians say no to worshiping the Roman king or bowing down to the Roman gods. Therefore, they were imprisoned and some were even burned alive for their faith in Jesus. Paul's second concern was not for the brutal wolves on the outside, but for those within the church itself. He says in Acts 20, 30, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Paul's point was that rebels would enter the church, bringing with them false doctrines and teachings, substituting them for divine truths. This internal threat manifested itself in the fourth and fifth centuries when church leaders subtly compromised the purity of biblical doctrine with human ideas and pagan practices to make Christianity more appealing to the masses. This blending of truth and error led to significant doctrinal shifts, including the rejection of vital Bible truths. What happened when the church turns away from biblical truths? 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12 says, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all righteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they may be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie, that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Here, Paul illustrates the chaos and deception that results when falsehood infiltrates the church. In time, these deviations led to further compromise, such as the introduction of idols into the Christian worship contrary to the second commandment. The integration of pagan statues was introduced and rebranded as Christian saints. The biblical Sabbath was gradually replaced with Sunday. Under the guise of Christian worship in honor of the resurrection, the Sabbath was changed to Sunday, the day of worship for the sun God. Despite lacking biblical endorsement for this change, Sunday worship had become a widespread practice among modern Christians, illustrating the lasting impact of departing from the scripture. How can we avoid being led astray by false teachings? Continue to the next segment of this video, part four, safeguarded by the word. In a world filled with uncertainty and deception, the need for a steadfast beacons of light for the truth has never been greater. This call for clarity of the truth is echoed in the teachings of Jesus and Paul as they offer guidance on navigating the muddy waters of false teachings and spiritual decline. In John 17, 15 through 17, Jesus prays not for his followers to be removed from the world, but to be protected from the evil one through the sanctification of truth. John 17, 15 through 17 says, 
I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one, that they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. His message is clear. Truth is our shield. Similarly, Paul says in Acts 20, 32, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Both emphasize the protective power of divine truth. The Bible is the ultimate embodiment of truth. It is the infallible revelation of God's will. It cannot and does not give us wrong advice. It shows God's plan to save us sinners. Thus, like no other, we can always trust the Bible and its teachings. The Bible is still relevant today. Paul affirms this in 2 Timothy 3.16, saying that all scripture is God-breathed and is instrumental in teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. The entire Bible is inspired by God, not just part of it. It is our guide to navigating the issues of life. It is our roadmap for understanding God's plan, including the events of Jesus's life, death, resurrection, and the promise of his return. We must accept the fact that all of the Bible comes from God. If we don't, Satan can use our doubts about the Bible as God's word to deceive us in believing his lies. It exposes satanic delusions and reveals the devil's deceptions. Therefore, the Bible and the Bible only must be the reason for our faith and everything we believe. You see, Satan hates the word of God and has done everything possible throughout the centuries to destroy its influence. Yet we face challenges in upholding this truth, but there are voices that attempt to diminish the Bible's divine origin, suggesting that it is merely a collection of outdated old-fashioned ideas penned by historical figures, modern thinkers, many theologians, and many Christians focus so much on the human side of the scriptures that they see the Bible as the word of man instead of the word of God. Many argue that it is the writings of kings, shepherds, fishermen, priests, poets, and others who share their understanding and conceptions of the God of nature and of reality the best way they could in their time and place. Thus, they conclude it has no significance to us today. We must stand against any and all attempts to undermine the Bible's authority or inspiration, even from those who, while professing great love of the Bible, bring doubt about it, even subtly. The Bible itself refutes their claims, offering timeless wisdom that continues to resonate and guide billions around the world today. For instance, Psalms 119, 105, 116, 130, 133, and 160 highlights the biblical role in illuminating our path, strengthening us and imparting understanding. These passages reinforce that scripture is not just relevant, but crucial for our life journey. Observe what the following scriptures say about God's word, the Bible. Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 116, uphold me according to your word that I may live and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Psalm 119, 130, the entrance of your word give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Psalms 119, 133, Direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Psalms 119, 160. The entirety of your word is truth and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. As followers of Christ, we are called to immerse ourselves in the scriptures 
and arm ourselves with their truths against Satan's deception. Satan has long sought to undermine God's word, knowing that its teachings are the foundation of our faith. By familiarizing ourselves with the Bible, we safeguard ourselves against his lies that seek to lead us away from God. In this ongoing battle between truth and deception, let us hold fast to the Bible as the cornerstone of our faith. But what about our brains, our thinking? How are we to deal with human reasoning? View the next segment of this video, part five, human reasoning apart from scripture. In a world rich with human creativity and intellect, we are blessed with minds that can probe the depths of nature and conceive incredible innovations. As Christians, engaging our minds doesn't stop at the church door. Rather, it intensifies as we delve into the divine mysteries presented in scripture. However, as sophisticated as our thinking might be, Understanding the profound truths of the Bible is beyond our reach without divine help. The Holy Spirit works through our minds to help us understand scripture. Thus, the Holy Spirit is essential, for it is not human wisdom, but divine revelation that eliminates scripture. The Bible emphatically warns of the pitfall of relying solely on human reasoning in divine matters. Notice the warning given in the following scriptures of the dangers of following our own path without God's guidance. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. These passages teach us that what seems right to a person can end in spiritual death. In times of moral chaos, people tend to define their own truth. And like sheep, we often stray, each following our own way. One of Satan's most effective tools of deception is to have us believe that our own human reasoning is sufficient. Some conclude that they do not need the help of the Holy Spirit or the Word of God to help them know God's will, but there may be a way that seems right to us or even to an entire group of people or culture, but without the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, it leads to destruction. God, in his infinite wisdom, has not left us to wander aimlessly. He has given us the Holy Spirit and the Bible as our ultimate guides, not just in determining right from wrong, but in understanding the very essence of truth and morality. If someone tells you that the Bible is inaccurate, invalid, or irrelevant, you are, can be sure that they are dead wrong. Any teachings or ideas that contradict the Bible is certainly flawed, for scripture is the ultimate authority of truth. To be grounded, we must make the Bible our final judge of anything we hear, read, or see in self-help books, videos, social media, or even textbooks. If it speaks contrary to the word of God, dismiss it. You might ask, why do we need the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible? Just as our minds alone cannot fathom the complexities of God's word, the Spirit enlightens us and empowers us, helping us to align our human reasoning with divine wisdom. How can we be sure of the Bible's accuracy? Study the prophetic message presented in Daniel 2. It provides an accurate historical timeline that goes from Babylon to the end of earth's history. It is like a sure testament to the Bible's accuracy and reliability. Revealing that historical events unfold as God has foretold in his word, this prophecy should not only validate the scriptural records, but also fortify our faith in him and his word. Thus, in embracing the Bible with the help of the Holy Spirit, 
We are not limiting our intellect, but enriching it, ensuring that our journey through life is aligned with divine truth. The Bible is to be presented as the word of the infinite God, as the end of all controversy and the foundation of all faith. The real battle between Christ and Satan is for our minds. How can we be sure that our minds are under God's complete control? Continue to part six, battle for the mind. In 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6, Paul confronts a profound spiritual blindness that afflicts those who do not believe, stating, whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe. The term mind comes from a Greek word that refers to our thoughts and understanding, our perception, our mental capabilities. It points directly to the battle ground where the cosmic battle between good and evil, light and darkness is unfolding. The stakes are high in this spiritual battle of our minds as described vividly in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. It indicates that there is a real fight between light and darkness for the very essence of our thoughts and beliefs. In fact, the word mind extends beyond mere thoughts to encompass our deepest understanding. Our mind is the battleground where the forces of Jesus and Satan clash. No, this battle is not fought with guns and knives, but within the confines of the human consciousness. The SDA Bible commentary illuminates this verse saying, the battle between Christ and Satan is a battle for the mind of men, supporting it with the following verses. Romans 7, 23 and 25, Romans 12, 2, 2 Corinthians 3, 14, 2 Corinthians 11, 3, Philippians 2, 5, Philippians 4, 7 and 8. It says that Satan's principal work is to blind or darken man's mind. He does this by keeping them from the study of God's word, by interfering with the powers of the mind through the excess of body and soul by wholly occupying the mind through the things of this life and by appealing to pride and self-exaltation. You see, Satan's strategy is to hide the truth, keeping the people in darkness and deep ignorance. His tools are distractions, excess and pride all designed to divert us from spiritual truths and engross us in the shallowness of life. However, these individuals are not ignorant because they lack intelligence. They are blind because they have turned away from the light of the gospel, the Bible. They have had opportunity to embrace the truth of the scriptures, but chose disbelief instead, leaving them vulnerable to Satan's deceptions. As the SDA Bible commentary adds, the gospel is the only means by which Satan's diabolical schemes and deceptions can be exposed and by which men can see the way from darkness to light. The message of the New Testament gospel centers on the transformative events of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. It serves as light, illuminating our path to lead us out of darkness. Jesus is the heart of the gospel and he is the center of all scripture. John reiterates this, portraying Jesus not just as a bearer of light, but as the light itself in John 1, 4 through 5 and 9 and 14. In him was light and the light was the light of men and the light shined in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This light was so intense that when Jesus walked the earth, he turned the darkest moments into day. During the early centuries of the Christian church, Jesus's message was not merely about spiritual enlightenment, but about a radical transformation that redefined their entire existence. 
His light shield them from Satan's deceit and treachery, nurturing a community resilient in faith and devoted to the pursuit of truth. They were redeemed by his grace, transformed by his power, and motivated by his love that even death could not break their bond of loyalty. As we face our own daily struggles with the forces that seek to blind us, let us cling to the powerful truth of the gospel. Let's immerse ourselves in the scripture, drawing upon their wisdom to guide us through the challenges of modern life. By doing so, we not only secure our spiritual vision, but also extend this light to others trapped in darkness. This journey with Christ is not just about personal salvation. It's a call to carry our candle and go light the world, reflecting his radiant light through our lives. Thank you for watching this video. To be notified when my next video comes out, subscribe to Sabbath School Daily by Dr. Brenda Ware Davis. You may also obtain the free study guide at sabbath.school or ssnet.org. If you enjoyed this video and want to make it available for your friends and family to watch, click like, then share. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing.